Burn. The word of the day, nothing personal is burn. That's what Charles Barkley did to Draymond Green. I'm not talking the type of burn that happens after you spent a night in a place you shouldn't. I'm talking when you say something that is so perfect that there can be no response. We remember last week Draymond Green came out and said, hey, no rings for Barkley. You can't even talk about being one of the best without rings. Charles Barkley said the following thing to Draymond Green. The number one burn since that bachelor party in Mexico. He's the least famous person in the boy band, and he thinks he's a star, and he's not. He's lucky to be in the boy band. He thinks all the girls are screaming for him. No, they're screaming for Justin Timberlake. The role of Justin Timberlake will be played by Stephon Curry, by Clay Thompson, by Kevin Durant. And Draymond Green is that other guy. That's a burn. Way to go, Charles. You're one of the top 50 in my mind. Okay. I want to be as, uh, I don't want to be alarmist in any way. I want to cover coronavirus in a way that is clear to you where I stand and what I would be doing. I want to take you inside right now what's happening within Major League Baseball and the commissioner's office, what's happening in the NBA offices, what's happening in the governmental offices. This is evolving. Right now I'm doing this show at 2 p.m. on March 11th. By the time you listen at 4 or watch at 5 or 6, there could be even more updates. Because this, in order to get everything to you in a timely way, we would have to do a 24-hour live show. Maybe we can self-quarantine and do a live show and just stay on like the all-news podcast. But let's start with what it just is happening now. Number one, let's start in the NBA. The Golden State Warriors will not be playing in front of fans for the rest of the season. It is being announced only that the game against the Nets taking place, when is that game, Matthew, tomorrow? The game against the Nets tomorrow will not be with fans because the city of San Francisco came out and said, listen, you don't have a choice anymore. We don't think you should be playing games. And the Warriors said, you know what? We're going to play. We're totally fine playing. And come on, fans. I don't care what advice you give. We're playing. Imagine what's going on right now with the politicians and with the team. They call up the city of San Francisco. It's probably an aide to the mayor, a deputy mayor. Calls up. Not anybody, not the president of the Warriors, calls the person in governmental relations. We had people like that with the Marlins. The call comes in, and they say, hey, um, we're about to release a statement. And the statement is, very simply, we do not believe that you should be having any gathering with over 1,000 people, period. We believe you should not. The Warriors respond. They say, thank you. I will bring that to my team president. We will talk to our PR people, and we'll talk to the league we appreciate your suggestion. Click. The government representative calls the mayor and says, listen, I'm not sure the Warriors are going to listen. I think they're still going to have the game. We'll know when they require both on and off property security, which is all the off-duty police who are both inside the building and outside the building. Every time you go to a game, every time you see a policeman or woman they are inside, that's inside the building, getting time and a half, or they're outside the building, getting time and a half, doing parking and doing security. In order to have a game with fans, you have to have fire rescue police, period. Not even a question. So the Warriors get together, they call the president and say, hey, um, just so you know, we're not supposed to be playing these games. The president says, we're playing. He calls his CFO. He knows exactly the amount of money that the Warriors make per game. Exact. And my guess is, just for fun, just for S's and G's, say it's $4 million. Let's just say that their local revenue would be about $160 million, which is $4 million per game, 40 games. There's no way they're giving up $4 million. There's just no chance of it, especially given the fact they have no playoff revenue coming, 
They have no chance for any additional revenue, and they're probably going to have a downtick in season ticket holders next year due to their poor performance. The CFO says that's the number, but I'm not making the decision. CFOs do not make those decisions. The team president says, all right, I'm calling the owner. Listen, here's the facts. It's been suggested that we not play. What I think we should do as team president is we play the game, but we will increase hand sanitizers around around the new arena, Chase Center. We will make sure that there are gloves being worn by all employees, by all concession employees, by all ticket takers, and we'll do our best to make sure that if anyone has a fever or is sneezing or coughing, that we will politely ask them to leave after having paid their money. The owner says, hey, for $4 million, I'm good. The president calls the NBA and says, we're not supposed to be playing, but we're going to play. The NBA says, no problem, because that's called kicking the can. Let's worry about it tomorrow. Well, tomorrow came because the mayor and the politicians in San Francisco said, we are taking this choice away from you. We are telling you now, no games. You may not play in front of fans, period. You cannot tell me that you disagree. You cannot tell me that you appreciate my advice, but you're going to go your own way. Stevie Nicks, you may not play. Okay. What do the Warriors do? First thing, first call to the NBA. All right, Adam, Commissioner Silver, we have a situation where we cannot have a gathering. We cannot have fans against the Nets tomorrow night. Here's the two choices. One, you cancel the game. Two, we play the game in New Jersey as a road game. Three, we play the game at home, but in front of no fans, completely close the building. Adam Silver gets together with his board of governors, he gets together with his labor department, and he realizes the only solution, the only one, is they will play in front of no fans. That's the solution for today. Well, here's the news. The Warriors will not play another game in front of fans this season. I promise you that. Because this coronavirus is not getting better today, it's getting worse tomorrow. I'm not trying to be an alarmist. I'm trying to tell you what scientific facts will tell me. I'm trying to say that what we saw in China is what we're going to see here in the United States. If you are paying attention and trying to learn, you're understanding a concept called flattening the curve. Flattening the curve means that you're trying to spread out the coronavirus, not trying to contain it or curtail it. You're trying to make sure that not everyone gets it at once. That's how to deal with it from a healthcare standpoint. That's called flattening the curve. Canceling an event this week, for a week, for two weeks, it's not nearly enough. It's going to have to go longer. And if you think it's stopping with the NBA, you're not even close. There was a rumor today, the funniest rumor of the day. It's not funny. It's actually pathetic. Whoever made this up, if it's an actual league source in the NBA, that person should not have a job. Somebody said that the NBA was considering moving games to a neutral site where there is no instance of coronavirus outbreak. Do you understand how stupid that is? You do not take infected people or the chance of having an infected person and put them in a place where there are no infected people yet. That is how you spread a virus, not contain it. There is zero chance that the NBA will move games to a site for the sole reason that there's no coronavirus at that site. We had to move games during Zika times. I was joking around with Tom Kohler, one of our pitchers, who would not go to Puerto Rico. Either his wife was pregnant or he wanted his wife to be pregnant. Whatever the case was, no chance he said, I'm playing in Puerto Rico. We had a team meeting with doctors, lawyers, scientists, we had presentations. Tom Kohler was a no. Fine, we moved the games from Puerto Rico to Miami. During hurricanes, you move the games inland, away from the hurricanes. I get that. That's a neutral site. It's not neutral to go to a place where there's no coronavirus. So what's next? What's next is the very real possibility that games will eventually be canceled. What's baseball going to do? 
you know what? Coke, I don't want to go to baseball yet. I want to do events that are happening right now. Opening week, opening days for two weeks. Let's talk about today. Let's talk about the fact that right now you have got San Francisco saying you may not play in front of fans. The governor of Washington came out today and said no more gatherings of over 250 people. No more in Kings County, which is where the Mariners play. It's where the XFL team plays in Seattle. As you know, if I don't give you the last name, it's because I don't know what it is. The Seattle Sounders play. I'm getting up-to-date information right now about a news advisory. This is from the, fo- the Washington Governor Jay Inslee's announcement that no large groups can happen. So the Mariners came out with the statement that they want to play in Seattle as soon as possible, but there will be no games played right now, no Mariners games. They've got to move the games somewhere. So what's happening exactly? You have got governments who are waiting, but they're waiting too long. So they're starting to act faster. It started with Washington. It started with Ohio with another suggestion, and the Cincinnati Reds and Columbus Blue Jackets said, ah, we're going ahead anyway. Then it moved on where the San Jose Sharks decided they were going to play no games. Now the Warriors are going to play games, but no fans. Now you've got baseball saying the March 24th exhibition game canceled that was going to be played at Oracle Park in San Francisco. Do you think it's okay to not play a game on March 24th, but it's okay to play on March 26th in San Francisco? Do you think it's safe to play games in New York City right now? What about Los Angeles? If you think that the governor of Washington is the only governor who is going to stop games from being played, you're wrong. There's no chance of it. It is now a virtual lock. You want to talk about the NCAA tournament. Such a big deal at CBS as it should be. A big deal for players, a big deal for fans. We all want everything to be normal. Everyone craves normal. There's nothing normal right now. If you think that there's a ban on events in Kings County, but the NCAA tournament will go on as scheduled with fans in Spokane, you are not paying attention. As a former decision maker with things like this, when big events happen, where leadership is required, decisions are going to be made that are not going to be popular to networks or to fans or to gamblers or to fantasy players. But this is not about sports anymore, folks. This is about business. Ah, I caught you. It's not just about business. It's actually now about a pandemic. It's about making sure that in the United States, we do what we were afraid to do up until now. We were afraid to really act with authority to contain this. And now it's not too late, but we have elongated the problem. Do you know right now in China, they're going back to work. The American players who play in the Chinese professional league were told, come back. We're ready to play again. They made it through the rain, Barry Manilow. They made it through because they were decisive. And right now, leagues are not being decisive. They are waiting for governments to be decisive. They're actually taking indecisive governments and ignoring them the way the Reds are. The Reds did a statement saying, of course we're going to do our parade. Of course we're doing opening day as scheduled. It's a normal opening day for the Reds. You want to talk about an owner with no feel? That is not what you release. Instead, you say, we understand the severity of what is going on, and we will be working with governmental officials to do what's right for people in Ohio. By the way, breaking right now, the San Francisco Giants have said they're staying in Arizona until they get regular season news. The Houston mayor says that all city-related events are canceled through March. This is just starting. I could sit here and record this for 24 hours, and we would have enough news to cover every minute. At CBS Sports HQ, they decide when it's going to be breaking news. You might as well stay on the damn desk because everything's going to be impacted. You think the Masters in April, everyone's going to Augusta and going to stand around the 18th hole? 
You think the social distancing when you're one inch away from someone in total silence? Not going to happen. I hear a sneeze right now in the studio, and I want to run for cover. And that's normal. Why people are buying toilet paper, I don't know. But the reality is that social distancing, quarantining, what China did when they quarantined a city and we all thought it was outrageous, you know what's going on in New Rochelle, New York. They quarantined that city. The National Guard is there now. This is not me being an alarmist, folks. This is being pragmatic. There will be quarantining of areas more than just New Rochelle. There have to be. We've got to find a way to flatten the curve. We've got to find a way to get more people tested, and we've got to find a way to make sure that we can contain this outbreak, and I'm measuring it in terms of weeks, not days. Other people are measuring it in terms of months. So where does sports fit in? This isn't like post 9-11 where you want to do it for the country's good. I saw people talk about the NCAA tournament. We need the NCAA tournament to go on because we need people to feel good about themselves. And we need people to feel that everything's okay. Really? That's our story that we're going to stick to? That we're going to have reckless indifference toward what we need to do to actually maintain health because we think that NCAA tournament games make us feel good? I'll feel good watching them on TV. The games will go on. There will not be fans. I'm not breaking news here. I have no information. What value am I adding to you by listening to Nothing Personal? It's telling you that your desire to pretend that everything is normal is a normal desire that is completely inappropriate right now. It doesn't mean go take all your money out of the bank and put it under the mattress or go to a store and buy hand sanitizer or pay $60 to get one little tube of sanitizer. That's not what I'm talking about. As a matter of fact, there are people who would tell you that hand sanitizer has nothing to do with the spread of coronavirus. There are things that we could have done, and it's called containment, which is quarantining. That is why cities are starting to come out one by one. So as a sports league, we've got to take a leadership position. We have got to stand up and say, I'm MLB. We are not holding games. We are not putting our players or our executives, or our policemen, or our firemen, or our board operators, or the media. The media is protected by standing six feet away from players. It's laughable. The media is protected by not going into a clubhouse, or players are protected because the media is not in the clubhouse. We talked about it yesterday. It's laughable. MLB is looking back at that decision, and they're saying, wow, talk about putting a Band-Aid over a hole in the Titanic as it's sinking, hoping that water will not come out of any place else. It's like putting your finger in a waterfall. Do you know what happens? Have you ever done that when you stick your finger in a waterfall? The water finds a place. It doesn't go where your finger is, but it goes around your finger, and it all ends up exactly where it did end up before. That's what's happening right now with coronavirus. It's all going to end up in the same place. It's a matter of who's first and smart enough to get there. So here's what I'm doing. NBA, games continue. We're not moving them at all to neutral sites. Home games will be played. If there's no fans, there's no fans. We have a TV product, and we will show the games on TV. I am protecting the players as best as I can. Because the minute a player, and just today, a German soccer player tested positive for coronavirus. The minute an NBA player tests positive, game over. No more games. Because I can no longer protect any other players or any other staff. Arizona is being used as a safe haven by the Mariners, by the Giants, Maybe Florida will be used as a safe haven. I don't know why. We've got cases in Broward. It's very curious to me, and I am not a conspiracy theorist at all, at all. I like the movie, actually, with uh, Mel Gibson before I knew he was an anti-Semite. There are no cases in Miami-Dade and no cases where the theme parks are up in Orlando, but the cases are in Broward. Is that really possible? that nothing's going on where the majority of tourists go for spring break, Miami-Dade, and where everyone goes to the parks at Disney? I'm just saying, maybe not. 
So having teams stay in Arizona is a great idea, except what college campuses are doing, they could have everyone stay on campus. They're sending everyone home. Colleges are saying, don't come back from spring break or leave now, we will do online classes. These are universities. People were criticizing the Ivy Leagues for canceling the tournaments. Come on. The MAC conference, the Big West, they canceled. It's just starting. Everyone should be on self-quarantine. And that's not an alarmist. Work will go on. If you're feeling well, you go to work. We're here at the CBS studios. Someone asked me, Amanda, an anchor on CBS Sports HQ. You can follow her. I don't know what her tw tweeter is. Tweeter is. Maybe Amanda Garris, CBS. She said, what would happen if someone in this office tests positive for coronavirus? And I said, that's simple. CBS Sports HQ would be run 24-7 out of another studio. Because this studio, everyone here would have to go into quarantine for at least 14 days. And that means home. That means not going out at all for 14 days. That's not being an alarmist. That's a fact. If you work in an office where coronavirus happens, that office will close for 14 days. I'm frustrated because I think that we, we lost an opportunity. And this is not me being political. The opportunity we lost is that we could have gotten in front of this. Leagues could have gotten in front of it. Our government could have gotten in front of it. And we are being reactive. And when you're reactive, you are forced to do breaking news on a network every five seconds because the news keeps changing. Seattle's statement, it's outstanding. The Mariners, I'm just seeing this for the first time. We will provide more information about our plans for the games as it becomes available. Why were we caught with our pants down? We knew exactly what was going to happen when a hurricane was coming. That's a hurricane. Do you know when you're allowed to not know what your plan is? When you suffer an earthquake. Why? Because earthquakes come and you never know when. So you don't have a contingency plan. Hurricanes, you know 10 days out when you're in the cone. You're forced to have a contingency plan. Coronavirus is the same thing. The Mariners knew they were going to have to move home games way before they put this statement out. The Giants knew they weren't going to play in San Francisco way before they announced it today. You think the New York teams don't know exactly what's coming down the pike in New York? They know exactly. They just don't know what to announce. By the way, Europe is still, just to catch you up on a few Coronas updates, Arsenal. They had a game against Man City canceled. Canceled. Not played in front of no fans. Actually canceled. And the reason they did, this is amazing, the reason they did is that Arsenal players socialized with the Olympicos owner after a game last week, and the Olympicos owner has coronavirus. So now the Arsenal players have to be quarantined because they can, who would play them? Query, why are they meeting with another team's owner? Not the point. Tokyo Olympics, rumors, jeopardy. Of course, of course. I, I don't know how to say it any more clearly. This is not something that will just disappear over the course of a week or two. MLB cannot say to you, the reason why there's no comment, they can't say to you, games in Seattle will start as of April 15th. No, they cannot. There is no way the governor himself, Governor Inslee of Washington, has no idea when his ban will be lifted on public gatherings. The reason why there's no outside date is because we don't control the curve. If you controlled the curve, you would be able to have an outside date. China's outside date, they were out of commission for, is it two months, three months? That is realistic, not alarmist. It is realistic that these bans will last for months, not weeks. It's not the apocalypse. It's not the end of the world as we know it. REM was not prescient. It is simply that in order to stop this outbreak, you need to make sure you contain it. To contain it, you stop public gatherings. All of you buying tickets to concerts, you think concerts aren't going to be impacted? We read that Justin Bieber downscaled from stadiums to arenas. 
You think that's because of the virus? No. <laughs> that was because of ticket sales. When the concert gets completely blown away, that's because of the virus. Okay, so you want to talk to Samson is something that we do. And uh, my so you want to talk to Samson was a question that was asked, and I sort of covered it, but I want to keep doing it because I love that you're DMing me and following me on Twitter. I'm getting unbelievable questions. I got one. Should Ohio teams have followed the governor's request? That's a great question. I don't know if you're from Ohio. I don't know if you were actually one of the people being impacted. I don't know if you actually work for the Cincinnati Reds. Maybe you were just taking a poll. Should Ohio teams have followed the governor's request? Yes, of course they should have. Just what I talked about on this show. You cannot go against what the government is saying. And this is not talking about monarchies. This is not talking about where we are having blind following of a government doing things that are immoral, illegal, against humanity. This is not racism. This is not sexism. This is the government is making decisions, but they didn't want to be the bad guy. The governor of Ohio gave you an opportunity. Jim, is it Jim DeWine? Governor DeWine gave you an opportunity, and you missed it. And now you know what's next in Ohio? You're going to be told what to do. And if you think that Mike DeWine was kidding, you're simply wrong. So you want to talk to Samson. Should Ohio teams follow the governor's request? Yeah, they definitely should. Okay, there is other news today, and I want to get to it because uh, this is the news that many people have been waiting for. Um, Harvey Weinstein is going to get That is the news today. And here's why I know that. Because there's a few things that people don't like. They don't like rapists. They don't like molesters. And they don't like abusers. Guess what, Harvey? You're guilty. He was sentenced to 23 years today. That is the same as a life sentence. Harvey Weinstein will not live 23 more years, and that was a purposeful sentence. They could have given him as low as five years. He'd have a chance to maybe survive. Not with dignity, but he'd have a chance to survive. Now he will die in prison. So the question is, what do you do with this information? How do we move forward? And I've thought about this topic so much. It's a topic that is uh, maybe one of the most upsetting things that I've dealt with internally because what he did, using power to get sex, using power to get people to pretend that they like you or love you or want to be with you or touch you, threatening careers because girls and women are not doing what you want them to do, that's a sickness, and that sickness needs to be punished. And my internal problem is this. There are movies that Harvey Weinstein has made and produced that are in my top 100. There are movies in my top 100 where, that have sexual predators as their stars, anti-Semites as their stars. How do I separate? So yesterday, I watched Inglorious Bastards because I knew he was going to be sentenced today. And I wanted to remind myself watching that movie what it is about that movie that got its way into my top 100. And the reason is, it's a Quentin Tarantino masterpiece. It is a movie starring Brad Pitt. It's a movie starring Christoph Waits. It's a movie starring Diane Kruger. It is about sort of a story of what happens to Hitler. It's not true, but it's what we wish were true. It's almost like the prequel to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. If you've seen that, you know exactly what I mean. If you haven't seen it, please go see it. I don't want to spoil it. But Inglorious Bastards is a movie that Quentin Tarantino wrote, produced, and directed. But Harvey Weinstein of Miramax and Harvey Weinstein was an executive producer. Do I make a blanket statement? Do I say I will not watch any Harvey Weinstein movies? I don't want to do that. I would rather watch them and educate people what they're seeing, why they're seeing it, and why Harvey right now has soap on a rope. Let's talk about it. Let's explain to people what he did. That doesn't mean that one part of him was not talented. What it means is he's sick and now he's been punished. I'll give you another example. Do you not watch Vincent Van Gogh and look at his paintings because he had mental stability issues? Cut off his own ear? 
I'm not comparing mental instability and mental sickness to sexual predators. What I'm saying is there are many things that we may not agree with, agree with but we've got to educate ourselves. And one way to educate yourself is not to put your head in the sand. And that's what we did with coronavirus. I don't want people to do that with Harvey Weinstein. I don't want people to put their head in the sand and say, I'm just not gonna watch the movies. I'm not gonna talk about it. I'm gonna hope he disappears. I don't want Harvey to ever disappear. I want people to see exactly what it is when you behave the way he behaved and the punishment you get. 23 years is not enough to heal what he did to these women. A lifetime is not enough. My hope for these women is that they feel some tiny morsel of justice, but that maybe there's a chance that other women will speak up, other men will speak up, people will speak up and realize that there is now an opportunity to punish someone for what they did, for not just misbehaving, but for breaking the law and for making people feel so tiny and insignificant. It's a disgrace. Good luck, Harvey. Okay, uh, Barry Bonds. He's always in the thick of it, Barry. You know, the funny thing about Barry, he so badly wants to be loved. We did a whole segment about him, and it was all about the concept of the death sentence, except I didn't care that he thought MLB had given him the death sentence. I was explaining to you, nothing personal fans, I was explaining, and thank you, by the way, for downloading, subscribing, watching. I appreciate it. I was explaining why Barry Bonds feels the way he feels and why Barry Bonds is not in the Hall of Fame, why he has not had the career renaissance like Alex Rodriguez has had. I was explaining the facts of the case. It turns out that Barry Bonds was not too happy with the article that was written about him in The Athletic. In that article, it was stated that he felt that MLB had given him the death sentence. Well, Barry Bonds took to Instagram and delivered a full three-paragraph chastising of this media member saying that he took my quote out of context. He misunderstood what I was saying. I was not saying that MLB had given me the death sentence. I was saying Hall of Fame voters had given me the death sentence. And now there's been a clarification. The writer of the story gets on Twitter, gives a little tweet, and says... We have made an editorial correction and noted the paragraph where there's been a misunderstanding. It was an entire 180 for the writer, all because Barry felt the need to come forward and clarify because the death sentence part of the interview had gotten so much attention. But Barry, you could have done totally differently. Instead of an Instagram post, wouldn't it have been better to actually say to your fans, listen, here's why this was written. Here's why I said what I said. I'm not demanding a retraction. I'm not demanding that the athletic covers its ass and says that, oh, I was wrong. I made the mistake. Instead, I am telling you, my fans, or people who are not fans of me, let me tell you why I feel the way I feel. Because I was wrong to lie to you. I was wrong to tell you that I wasn't on steroids. I was wrong to tell you that my home run numbers were done without cheating. I should have come clean in the beginning. It doesn't matter that I never failed a test. I should have. I just had the ability to mask my tests more than anybody else. I should have told you from the beginning why I was doing it because it wasn't enough for me to be the best the way I was before I started taking steroids. I wanted to be better than the all-time greats, and I wanted there to be a huge distance between me and the second best player, and the second best player was taking steroids, so I had to also. Can you imagine if Barry Bonds would just do that? Then you don't need to actually get a retraction of anything. Then you have a chance of actually getting into the Hall of Fame, not really, but you actually have a chance to have a career renaissance where you're not stuck sh shaking hands in San Francisco, which by the way is not allowed anymore. Knuckles at best, maybe elbows. But Barry had another misstep by taking to Instagram with his statement. It did not curry any favor with anyone. It actually was just embarrassing. Okay, on to the next topic. 
I was fascinated with something that went on yesterday, and it's not getting a lot of attention because of coronavirus. But I want to give you some attention and give it some attention. We talked on this show about some of the XFL rule changes. We talked about one that was my absolute favorite, which was in a game for the XFL, you have an opportunity, instead of punting, you have a chance to have a fourth and 15 play from your own 30-yard line. If you don't convert the fourth and 15, the other team gets the ball at the spot where you don't get that first down. I thought that was brilliant. What's happened in the NFL is that onside kicks have become impossible to recover. The reason is that they do not want players having a point of contact like two rams in a cage. And that's what onside kicks are. You've got the offense getting a running start, which now is disallowed, running to the defense, and they are going full speed trying to get the ball, although really they're just hitting each other, hoping the ball bounces by accident, hits a receiving team's player, and then the kicking team has a chance to recover. And then as a fan, you have a chance to get another score, which means as a fan, you have a chance if you're down two scores toward the end of the game to actually win. Well, by the NFL dictating the rule changes that made contact verboten in a game where contact is what's required and contact is what fans love to see until it starts hurting their heads, and we've talked about that and nothing personal. But the fact of the matter is now the NFL is looking at a rule because when you can't recover an onside kick, what happens? When you have either bet the game, which the NFL cares about, backdoor covers become very unlikely, and backdoor covers are like a warm blanket over the love of gambling that is the NFL. Or if you actually just care about winning a game and you're down two scores, you can't get the ball back. The NFL is saying, you know what? Let's look at a rule change suggested by the Eagles that could change all of it. On kick kickoffs, let's give an option instead of kicking off, let's do a fourth and 15. Not crediting the XFL at all. But let's do a 4th and 15. I love it. If you think there's one rule change that's going to pass, it's going to be this, and how does it work? MLB would never float changes like this. I don't agree with how the NFL does it. The way we did rule changes in the competition committee is we discussed them amongst ourselves. Rule changes that we wanted to put into effect, we would direct the labor department to start meeting with the players' union about those changes. We would direct the rules committee to take a look at what those rule changes would look like and how they would be written. And as a competition committee, we would vote to enact those rule changes. And if the union didn't like it, we would wait one year and then we could push it on the union. That's one of the rules of a union. If they don't like the rule change, you only have to delay by a year and then you can do whatever you want. So we would decide when we wanted to start the clock on certain rule changes, like the three batter minimum that's happening in baseball. Do you think that that just happened? That was studied by the competition committee, uh, then looked at by the rules committee to make sure that it was written properly. We told baseball union about it. Whether they liked it or not, we said, hey, you can let us do it now or we're doing it next year. The NFL should do the same thing. The NFL has to find a way. They have to find a way. Okay. Uh, I want to go to quickly... Pick of the day. Is that what you want me to do, Matt? I'd like to do pick of the day, wait to see, and I've got a few other things I'd like to say. Does that work for you? Okay. I hate that we're doing pick of the day. But here's the funny part. First of all, I think it's now 17 and 26. Is there a chance you're wrong on the board right now? Is there a chance you did not update pick of the day? He's not talking to me. He's too angry. He totally forgot to do it because he was so crazed with the coronavirus breaking news and people running around the studio with the sniffles. I lost last night. I don't understand how. But if you are fading me, I am the greatest NBA picker of all time. I'm talking historic. What do I like tonight? <laughs> By the way, that's funny. So... If all the games got canceled, I'm guaranteed not to lose, but you'd be guaranteed not to win. Take the Nuggets over the Mavs tonight. 
because I've got the Nuggets, and I think I'm eventually going to win. By the way, it's now switched. If you're watching this, it just magically went from 17-25 and 25 to 17-26. and 26. Coca is now doing his job during the show instead of before the show. Good work there, Matthew. Pick of the day, Nuggets over the Mavs. I would suggest continuing to fade me because I just I can't get one right. Okay, wait to see. This is a great one. Brody Van Wagenen, my favorite guy. He's the GM of the Mets. I want to read you a quote that Brody Van Wagenen said. Well, let me give you context. It's too funny. You got to have context. There's a player for the Mets. His name is Michael Conforto. Michael Conforto is a very important player for the Mets and this season. He is a rising star. He potentially is one of their top two players along with Pete Alonso. Position players. Well, during a swing, during a catch, they won't tell you exactly where, he had a problem. He hurt his side. He went back to New York. We reported it. We were going to report it. It may have gotten cut from the show. He went back to New York. He had an MRI. He has an oblique strain. An oblique strain in baseball is measured in weeks, not days. It is guaranteed to miss minimum of two weeks, but more likely four weeks at best, depending on what, how bad the oblique strain is. So Brody Van Wagenen says, shockingly, here's his quote. There were no details when asked how long Conforto would be out. It's always very difficult to speculate on what ifs when we're talking about two weeks out. This is him responding to whether or not Michael Conforto will be available opening day. Brody, have you not watched our show? Just tell your fans the truth. Bro Michael Conforto has an oblique strain. He is not going to be ready for opening day. There is no scenario under which he can get cured, rehabbed, and get enough at-bats where I would be comfortable putting him in the lineup opening day. Why can't you say that? Why would you say there were no details? Do you know when we get an injury report from our team doctor or our team trainer, we get every last detail. We get pictures. We get pros. We get the written word. We get the spoken word. We have every detail known to mankind. It's just that we don't choose to share it with you, the fans. Don't tell us that you don't have the details. Say, I've got an idea. I've got the details, but I'm not willing to tell you. I would have more respect for Brody doing that. This is the easiest wait to see of all time. I'm already marking it as a, we got this one right. Michael Conforto will not play opening day. Caveat, assuming opening day is March 26th. Why am I saying that opening day may not be March 26th? Because if you've listened to this whole show and my people tell me, Mikey, Debo, that the retention rate is such that you do, you know that there is a chance that opening day in baseball will not happen March 26th. And I'm not being alarmist for the third time in this show. I am talking about what is the reality of what is going to happen. It started with playing games against the government's wishes. Then it went to government edicts that we cannot have public gatherings. Next, it is games being played without fans. The XFL Seattle team announced immediately after the edict, they will not play games in front of fans. That's easier for the XFL to do than for MLB. MLB, next step, games with no fans. Step after that, games canceled. Will MLB step up and cancel games before they are told to? What will the NBA do with the NBA playoffs? What will golf do with the Masters? What will the NCAA do with the NCAA tournament? If you think that everything is normal, please. It's not normal. We will get back to normal, but not today. The role of sports and sports leagues is to entertain you. It's to distract you. But I don't want to distract you right now. I don't want to entertain you right now. I want to make sure that you are paying close attention and not doing what you shouldn't be doing. Yes, that's a double negative. Please do what you're supposed to do. This is not a joke. This isn't about politics. This isn't about a re-election campaign. This is about making sure that we stop something faster than it is being stopped now. Why? Take a look at your 401k. Take a look at the economy. Take a look at industries that are being hurt. 
We have got to do something, and it's not an economic stimulus package. This is about making tough decisions. And Major League Baseball, National Basketball Association, the National Collegiate Association of Athletics, they will have to make tough decisions because if they think they can put their head in the sand and wait for someone to make it for them, then they shouldn't be in the positions they're in. Those decisions are coming. And when they do, it's not going to be business. It's not going to be personal. It's going to be for the greater good of this country. You wait to see.